Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma barat. Continuing on in our study of this compilation, the ascription to the Salafi Minhaj, which we talked about, the Minhaj or the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. So before we get in, back into the treaties, I wanted to mention some of the Dalil because it's most appropriate that we start with the Book of Allah and then the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the understanding of the Salaf with regards to various issues in the religion of Islam. And this is one of the things that distinguishes Ahl Sunnah or distinguishes Salafis from other groups is that they begin, they should begin with the Book of Allah, Dalil, evidence, for the for what they believe and how they practice Islam with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the madhab madhab of the salaf asali you know how the salaf understood and practiced Islam uh and from those uh some of the important uh verses in the Quran, or a particular verse which is very important, is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And hold, on a, hold all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be one jama'ah, one ummah, and holding on to the rope of Allah. The only way we can unite is based on the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars of tafsir, they mentioned that the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of them said, it is the Qur'an. And some of them say that it's the Qur'an and the Sunnah or the Jama'ah, what the Sahaba were upon. So all of those things, all of those explanations complement one another. They don't contradict one another. So in order to have unity in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have to unite upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een with Ba'a Tabi'een as we mentioned. And we mentioned some of the Dalil prior to this from the treaties. And one of the evidences is the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, خَيْرًا نَاسْ قَرْنِ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best people are those of my generation, then those who follow them, than those who follow them. So the scholars mentioned that that is evidence of the first three generations, the Salaf, Salaf al-Saleh, the righteous predecessors. Why did they call them righteous predecessors? Because there was hypocrites, there was disbelievers, there was all kind of other group, um, other religions and so forth that were in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And some who knew the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that doesn't make them the they're not from the Salaf al-Saleh. They may have it lived and met the Prophet ﷺ, but that doesn't make them a Sahaba or a Sahabi. But rather, that makes them someone who lived during the time of the uh, Prophet ﷺ. The Salaf al-Saleh means the pious predecessors, the righteous ones. Those are the ones the Prophet ﷺ is saying, خير الناس قرني. Though The best people is those of my generation meaning the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in because they followed Islam, they followed the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ Then those who followed them, meaning the Tabi'een, those who followed the path and studied of studied with the Sahaba, their students. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونُهُمْ And then the Itba'a Tabi'een, those who followed the Tabi'een, who were their students and who were on righteousness. That is the first three generations of Islam. That is the Salaf al-Saleh. And other evidence to show that we need to follow the Sabila Mu'mineen, the path of the Salaf, the minhaj of the Salaf. Listen to this beautiful hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an. He said, Khatta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan. Thumma, uh, thumma qal, hadha sabila Allah mustaqeeman. He said, this is the path of Allah Mustaqeeman, the straight, this is the path of Allah, the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he drew a line. Khatta lana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan. Thumma qal hadha sabeel Allah, in another narration. He said, this is the path of Allah. 
ثم خط على يمينه وخط على شماله فقال هذه سبل and he said these are the paths so this these are the paths paths and they are paths they're leading away they're all thinking they're going to Jannah and he said هذه سبل so ثم خط على يمينه وشماله ثم قال هذه سبل وليس منها سبيل إلا عليه الشيطان يدعو إليه he said, "These, those are the subul. Those are the different paths, and there is not one from amongst them except that there's a shaitan that is calling to it. And that's what you find when you have different groups and sects with different medhabs and different ideologies. And we're talking about medhabs in their aqidah, in their creed, how they understand Islam, the khawarij. Look at these modern day groups, Boko Haram." Uh, a shabab um, uh, ISIL or ISIS uh, or Daesh, uh, Al Qaeda. All of them, they say they're on the truth. Number one, all of them say that they're on the Sabil Allah, but all of them are calling our shayateen, calling to hell, calling to the hellfire. This is what Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, a shaytan, is calling to the path of the shaytan. This is what Ayman Zawahiri, the head of Al-Qaeda, and Bin Laden before him, they call to the shaitan. And this is what so many other groups, the, the head of Al-Shabaab, they call to the shaitan. Look how much blood they spill. And they say, this is the Sabil Allah, this is the path of Allah. Wa'iyadhan billah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them or curse them and break their backs. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So, the Prophet ﷺ was talking about that the Ummah would split. And then he said, uh, and so on each of these paths is a shaitan. And he said, ثُمَّ قَرَأَ وَأَنَّ هَذِ صَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ فَاعْتَبِيُوهُ وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا الصُّبُورِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, And verily this is my path, my straight path. Then follow it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded to follow it. Al-Amr yufid al-wujub. Whenever Allah commands you to do something, it's an obligation. Mustaqimah fa'tabiyu wala ta'tabiyu wala ta'tabiyu subu. And do not follow the path, the, the various paths. So Allah commanded us to be one jama'ah and to, to follow his, his straight path. Hablillah, the rope of Allah, the siratullahi mustaqimah, uh, the, the, the path of the book uh, of the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not the path of the Shayateen, those various groups who say you should be Sufi, who say you should be Shi'i, who say you should be Jamaat Tablik, who say you should be Akhwan Muslimin, who say you should be Sururi, so they sh you should be this group or this group, or Mu'tazili or Ashari or... No, none of those, those are all Subul. Those are all various paths. Instead, we want to follow the menhaj, the methodology of the Salaf al-Sali, what the Prophet sallallahu ordered us to. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, If tarakat al-Yahud ala ita wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara ala natain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa tafariku hadhi umma la thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha fin nar illa wahida. Kulna man hiya ya Rasulullah, qala man kana ala mithli, wa ma kana alayhi, wa ashabi al-yawm, wa kama qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Jews will break into 71 sects, Christians into 72 sects. My Ummah, that means the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, will break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire, except one. So then the Sahaba, جمعين, they asked, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? I mean, what, you know, how would some of the Ummah of Muhammad be, be in the fire? How could they go astray? We're Muslim, we're all Muslim, isn't that enough? The Prophet وسلم, said, Though the one that will be saved from the fire, he said, and this is why the scholars say Firqa to Najia, the safe sect, is the one that uh, that that adheres to what the Sahaba are upon and uh, uh, appear with the uh, who do what the Prophet وسلم, follow his path and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in in another hadith, and it's very important to set this context. This is a hadith of Irbad ibn Sariya, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, innuhum man ya'ish minkum ba'di fi zayra akhtilafin kathira, fa'alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafai rash, uh, khulafai mahdiyin al-rashidin, tamassiku biha wa'adhu alayha bin nawajid wa'iyakum muhtathan al-mur, finna kula bidatin 
This is a very important hadith. In this hadith of the Prophet he said, Verily those who live after me will see many differences of opinion. SubhanAllah. They'll see many different. Look how many differences we see now. Look how many groups now who say that we're doing the right way. That, that we're calling to the right path. That these ones call to modernism. These ones call to uh, Islamic democracy. These ones call to Islamic uh, uh, Islamic communism and socialism. These ones call to this. This one's calls to this. This one says make khuruj with us. This one says jihad and kill everybody. This one says this. Subhanallah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Whoever lives after me will see many differences. And then he said, so it gives you the prescription. He gives you the, the way to heal yourself, the way to protect yourself. It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala majmeen. So we have to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and his sahaba, especially those, the four khalifa rashidin. He said, Abu alayha bin nawajid and cling to it with your molar teeth. Where are your molar teeth? You know where they are? Your molar teeth are in the back of your mouth. Exactly. So the Prophet ﷺ said, cling to it with your molar teeth. If you cling to something with your molar teeth in the back of your mouth, that means this tooth in the back is biting onto it. Abu alayha bin nawajid. This shows us that the Prophet ﷺ was talking about severely holding on to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Anyway, Abu alayha bin nawajid. And beware of newly invented matters, because every newly invented matter is a leading of the leading of stray. It means it, it leads you astray. It leads you away from the path of the sabila mu'minin. It leads you away from the minhaj of ahl sunnah. It leads you away from the minhaj of the salaf asani. So it's very important that we have this understand understanding. And here's just a quick statement Imam bin Uthaymin said, which is uh, in reference to this. He said, Rahimullah ta'ala, as salafiyya hiya ittiba min hajj nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabihi la'annahum salafuna tuqaddimu alayna fitba'ahum huwa salafiyya. He said that salafiyya, it is the methodology uh, it is following the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning how he understood Islam, how he propagated Islam, his aqidah, his fiqh, his minhaj, his way of dealing with people, his manners, everything, and his companions, because they preceded us. They were our salaf, they were they are our pious predecessors, and they came before us and la laid the path for us. So following them, this is Salafiyah. That's very important to understand. Salafi is not a new group. It's not a new clique like some people act like it is. Some people make it like a new, as if they're a new sect. Call yourself Salafi and they don't even practice Salafiyah. And they don't even know what Salafi is. Some people are like this. Billah. But you want to be Salafi Haqqan, meaning you follow the book of Allah. And you follow the, 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 the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu And you follow the way the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, how they understood Islam, how they practiced Islam. And a, and a beautiful statement, before we quickly get into this treatise. Our Shaykh, uh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadiya Wadi, Allah Yahamu, he said this statement. He said, Dawata ahl sunnah dawatun ila kitabi la ila kitab min kitabi la ila kitabi la wa min sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam ila sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam he said the daw of ahl sunnah meaning what we are trying to practice we're trying to be from ahl sunnah we're trying Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, it is calling to the Book of Allah, meaning the Quran, to the Quran, and from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is beautiful. That shows that Dawah that Dawah to Ahl Sunnah Salafiyah is not about calling to yourself and calling to your group and calling to your clique and calling to your boys and even calling to your sheikh. But it's about calling 
to the minhaj, the methodology on how to understand Islam. That beginning Islam begins with the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you call to that until you die. That is what the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah is. It isn't calling, it's not about a clique. It's not about a group. Let's go back to the treaties now. Uh, the brother then mentioned, he, he added some of the statements of some of our Salaf, Muhammad ibn Ahmed al-Safarani, who died 1,188 Hijriya, which would have been about 300 years ago. He said, the indication to the Medheb of the Salaf and its clarification of its reality, and that the Medheb of the Salaf is safer out of the other Madahib, it is more knowledgeable and wiser. They are the first to embrace Islam of the Muhajirun. Uh, and the Ansar, and we talked about who they were. Likewise, the rest of the companions of the chosen Prophet وسلم, and those who followed them in goodness, and the Imams of guidance, they are those upon whom the Muslims agree regarding their guidance, their understanding, and their precedence, and taking them as an example, and to follow them, and follow their way, and take the same methodology as them. Muhammad's... Uh, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophet, his beloved, and his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with guidance and the true deen, to take the people out of darkness to light by the permission of their Lord to the praiseworthy, noble path. Allah testified for him that he himself sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a caller to Allah with his permission and a guiding light with his command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في كتابه الكريم هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرتي أنا ومن اتبعني. Allah subhanahu wa taala says في كتابه الكريم This is my way. Uh, I invite to Allah with insight. So Allah said this for the Prophet Allah said to say this. This is my way. I invite to Allah with insight, and I am those who follow. Uh, and and and. and uh, I and those who follow me, meaning those who follow the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that's evidence that we have to call to Allah and we have to follow the Messenger of Allah وسلم. The scholars of the past and present, present use the terminology Salaf. Majid, oh, Majd, Majdadeen ibn Athir said, and he died 606 Hijri, which is about 600, seven, about 800 years ago he died. He said, the Salaf of a person is the one who proceeded in death from one's fathers and those related to him. And this is why the first generation of the Tabi'een were called the Salaf as salih Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, who died 256 Hijri, which means he died 1,200 years ago almost. Uh, he said, Rashid ibn Sa'ad said, the Salaf used to like the stallion from the camels because it would be faster on a journey. From Imam Muslim ibn Hijaj, Imam Muslim, who died 261 Hijri in his Sahih and Sahih Muslim, he said Ibn Mubarak used to say in front of large gatherings, leave Amr ibn Thabit because he used to curse the Salaf, meaning the companions. Imam Bukhari mentioned a chapter heading in his Sahih chapter, what the Salaf used to store in their homes and their journeys from food and meat. Abdurrahman ibn Amr al-Uzai, Imam al-Uzai, who died 156 Hijri, said, Be patient upon the Sunnah. Stop where the companions stopped, and say what they said, and keep away from what they kept away from, and follow the way of your Salaf as since what is sufficient for them is sufficient for you. So the reason he mentioned these statements of our Salaf is to show that the term Salaf was used. It may not be used as we, the same way that we use it all the time, but it was used as a descriptor. It was used as an adjective to describe uh, either a people, meaning the Salaf as uh, or, uh, yeah, to, to describe the Salaf as and those who came before. So it shows the Mishru'iya of using the term Salaf. And we're going to talk more about that in depth in the next lesson. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.